Hey, I'm MJ, and if I ask you who the one person in your life is that you can trust with your whole life, who would that be? A parent, a friend, a sibling, or maybe a twin? One time I went bungee jumping, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically an extreme sport where you get harnessed up with a cord strapped around your feet and you jump off a bridge. And I had to put all of my trust in the person that was strapping me into the cord, and I felt a little bit scared, but I knew that he knew what he was doing, and so I jumped. Let's watch today's God story to see what it looks like to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Why is Cinderella bad at soccer? Because she's always running away from the ball. Hi everyone, it's Jen. I'm so glad to be back with you today. I want to tell you a story about a time that I had to trust a friend even though I was really scared to do so. See, I was with my friend at a theme park and there was this really big roller coaster that goes upside down and I've never been upside down on a ride before. I was so scared, but my friend said, just get on it, you'll have so much fun, I promise. And so I got on and they put the great big things down and I closed my eyes, I screamed really, really loud. But you know what? It was really, really fun and I actually can't can't wait to go on that ride again someday. In today's God story, we're going to learn about how wisdom comes from trusting in God. In fact, today's big idea is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Today, we're continuing in the book of Proverbs, which is a book about wisdom written by King Solomon, the king of Israel. You may remember that Solomon is the son of King David, and he could have asked God for anything, but he chose to ask for wisdom. So before we get into today's story, let's quickly talk about what a proverb is. A proverb isn't a promise, it's more of like a guiding principle for how to live wisely in life. It's important to remember that these proverbs aren't necessarily guarantees, but they can happen. Now let's jump into Proverbs Proverbs chapter 3. This chapter talks about the good things that can come from wisdom and trusting God. My child, do not forget my teaching. Keep my commands in your heart. They will help you live for many years. They will bring you peace and success. Don't let love and truth ever leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and a good name in the eyes of God and people. This part of the chapter is telling us that if we keep God's commands and hold truth and love close to our hearts, that we will find favor with God and with people. Do you know what the word favor means? Finding favor is kind of like when someone catches you doing something right. I really want to find favor with God. Next, the chapter tells us who we should trust to live a good life. Can you possibly guess who that might be? Let's take a look together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, obey him. Then he will make your path smooth and straight. The Bible says that we should trust God to help us live a good life. It even says that if we trust God and follow his path for our lives, we could have good health. If we honor him with our money, he can give us what we need. King Solomon goes on to tell us not to hate God's training because God trains those whom he loves. It's like when your mom or dad tell you what to do. They're trying to help you because they love you. Sometimes we might kind of hate it, but we need to remember that it's helping us learn to live the very best way. Solomon then tells the reader that the person who is looking for wisdom and gains understanding is blessed. Wisdom is better than silver or rubies or anything else you could want. God created the earth with wisdom and with understanding. He set the heavens in place. We need to trust God to bless us with wisdom so that we can make the right decisions, stay safe, and honor him. At the end of this chapter, King Solomon gives us some advice on what not to do. We shouldn't plan to hurt our neighbor, get someone in trouble who hasn't done anything wrong, or be jealous of someone. The writer reminds us that honest people are God's closest friends. And really, who doesn't want to be best friends with God? Let's read that last verse together. Wise people receive honor, but foolish people get only shame. As we've been talking about, wisdom is a really important quality of followers of Jesus. In today's God story, we learned that wisdom will gain us favor in God's eyes. And where can we find wisdom? In trusting God with our entire heart. God knows what is best for us. So in trusting him, he can help us live a good life. If you ever aren't sure what to do, pray, ask God for help and wisdom, and trust that he will direct you. Well, friends, it's been so good being with you today. I will see you next time. Quickly turn to the person next to you and discuss the following questions before the time runs out. Question time. Fill in the blank. Trust in the... with all your heart.
Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, remember him. Then he will make your paths and straight. Spirit, rocky. Father, grassy. Or Lord, smooth. Lord, smooth. Fill in the blank. Solomon said that the person who finds wisdom and gains understanding is blessed, king, or super blessed. Game time. Bike bark. How many times can you say the key verse before the time is up? Say it with me. Christ suffered once for sins. The one who did what is right suffered for those who don't do right. He suffered to bring you to God. 1 Peter 3, verse 18. Get ready! Three, two, one, go! That's great advice. When we don't know what to do, we can ask God for wisdom and trust that he'll give it to us. In this next story, Emily's mom thought that she could make things better by putting lots of time and energy into it. But then she realized that she needed to make some changes if she was gonna trust God. Let's watch this. I'd like you to meet my friend Emily. She's such a fun person, she's super active, and she always is smiling. Emily was born with Down syndrome, and kids with Down syndrome find it more difficult to learn and to take care of themselves than many other kids. Emily's mom, Debbie, did a lot of research on Down syndrome and worked out lessons to help Emily. They worked really hard, but Emily's mom realized that she was leaning so much on what they could do through hard work that she forgot to trust God. In that moment, she asked God to help her trust him with all her heart and show her what he had for Emily. Let's see what happened then. When Emily was a little girl, she always loved music and loved to dance in her room and perform for us. Willie up going and love horseback riding, reading, wedding stories, dancing. Me and my mom love Taylor Swift. So when a friend told us about rhythmic gymnastics and Special Olympics, it was just a natural fit, as it was for many of our friends who had young daughters. So we got together a group of moms who knew nothing about the sport and then just started it. And right from the get-go, Emily loved the performing part of it. <laughs> She started to excel. She started to win competitions locally, and then it went to the provincial level, nationals, and even at the world level. And we're just so proud of her. She's been to three world games in 27, 11, and 15 in China, Athens, Greece, and in Los Angeles. We've met such amazing people all over the world thinking of being in China and not being able to speak the language that you can communicate and they have this love and joy of supporting people and supporting their abilities, what they can do. So after the last World Games, Emily 
um, was getting a little bit older and we decided to retire from rhythmic gymnastics. But she loves the sport so much. There was a new team starting in Georgetown, the Georgetown Sunflowers, and we approached them and I knew the coach very well and asked if Emily could coach. Well, they were over the moon delighted so that the adults didn't have to perform the moves to show them they could use Emily and she would be there to, uh, to help out. And it's been amazing. Emily gets invited to the coaches' meetings, the coaches' end of the year parties, and they treat her with such respect. And she's very proud to wear her T-shirt that says coach on the sleeve. Emily's faith is amazing. To Emily, Jesus makes sense. She loves to worship. That's her favorite part of the service. I love Jesus. I love singing. I love communion. Emily is a, a prayer warrior. She has prayed for her sisters and brothers. She has seen answers to her prayer. I asked her the other day even if she prays before she goes to a competition, for example, and she says that she does. She was made in the image of God and she was made perfect the way she is and his glory can be fulfilled through her life every bit as much as it can and more than mine. I tell your dreams, make it happen, and let's love what you do. Question time. How did Emily's mom trust in the Lord with all her heart? Was there a time in your life where you trusted in the Lord with all your heart? What happened? Emily's mom learned to trust God, and that took away from the stress and concerns that she had before. Today, she now looks at Emily as an amazing, beautiful person who fully trusts Jesus with everything. Remember, when we trust God, He'll partner with us. Whether it's the big things or the small things, He'll be there for us. Let's break into our small groups to see what this looks like in our lives. 